Hi. Now, in this video tutorial, what I want to do is talk to you about what we call exact first order differential equations. But before we do this, we've just got to do a little bit of theory. It won't take too long, but uh, very important for this particular concept. Now, if we have, say, some function of x, f of x multiplied by y, and we were to differentiate this with respect to x, then we'd have to use the product rule of differentiation. In other words, we would take, say, f of x, and we multiply it by the differential of y with respect to x. That would be dy by dx. And then we have to add. And this time, we now differentiate f of x. So that would be f dash x, when you differentiate it with respect to x. And we multiply it by the y. So we've done the product rule here. So if we had a differential equation that looks like this, let's just copy that down. So if we had, say, f of x dy by dx plus f dash of x, or f prime of x multiplied by y, and it equaled, say, some other function of x. Let's call it g of x. If I had a differential equation that looked like this, then from this result up here, I know that the left-hand side of this equation is equal to the differential with respect to x of f of x multiplied by y. And that would equal our function g of x. Now, if I integrate both sides with respect to x, then this side is just going to go to f of x times y. And the right-hand side would be just simply the integral of g of x with respect to x. So if we have something like this, and assuming that we can integrate this very easily, then we can get a solution to our differential equation. And just to give you an example of how this works, let's just take this one here. We'll just say example one. So we need to have something that's got this format. So if I had, say, x to the power 4 dy by dx, and this was, say, my f of x, then the next term must be f dash of x. So in other words, 4x cubed multiplied by y. And this can equal, say, any function of x, g of x I've got here. Let's say it equals e to the power 2x. Then I should be able to solve this by this technique here. Because on the left-hand side of this equation, this is exactly the same as saying that it's the differential with respect to x of x to the power 4, my f of x, multiplied by y. Because if you differentiated this by the product rule, you would get this result. First part, x to the power 4 times the differential y with respect to x, that would be x to the 4 dy dx and then plus the differential of this part, which would be 4x cubed, and then you multiply it by the y. And that would now equal, in this example, e to the power 2x. Now, if we integrate both sides with respect to x, then what we're going to have here on the left is just simply x to the power 4 multiplied by y. And that's going to equal the integral of e to the power 2x integrated with respect to x. And so therefore, what we have is x to the power 4 times y equals, and the integral of e to the 2x is a half e to the power 2x. And then we mustn't forget the constant of integration, let's say plus c. OK, well, that's how we go about solving that one. Now, I've got another example here. You might like to try this one now that uh, I've given you one to do. It's got a few other features in it, though, that uh, uh, might throw you. Hopefully not, but uh, 
it's worth giving it a try. This time we've got a trigonometric one. We've got cos x multiplied by dy by dx minus y times the sine of x equals x squared. But when it gets to working out this constant, I'm going to give you some boundary conditions. We're going to say given that y equals 1 when x equals 0. So you might like to give this a go, OK? Just pause the video, come back when ready, and uh, you can check your work solution with mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go at this. Let's see how you got on. Well, first of all, this has got this format up here. Because if this is f of x, cos x, then if I differentiate cos x, I get minus sine x. And you can see we've got minus sine x. And then that's multiplied by the y. So we've got this term here. So that would mean that I can write the left-hand side as the differential of a product. So in other words, if we were to differentiate with respect to x, y cos x. Okay, I've written the y in front of the cos x this time on purpose. It just looks better that way. But nonetheless, if you differentiate this by the product rule, you'll get the left-hand side here. And this would equal x squared. So if I integrate both sides with respect to x, we've got that therefore y cos x must be equal to the integral of x squared with respect to x. Now if I integrate x squared with respect to x, we've got y equals cos x then equals a third x cubed. And then plus that constant of integration plus c. Now we know that we're told that when y equals 1, x equals 0. And if we substitute these values in to our equation up here, we're going to have 1 here multiplied by the cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So you've got 1 times 1, which is 1, equals. And then if x is 0, this term is 0. And that just leaves us with c. So c equals 1. So it follows then that our particular solution for this equation rather than the general solution. Remember, general solution is when you have plus c in it. It's going to be now y cos x equals one third of x cubed and then plus the value of c, which in this example is 1. OK, so there's our particular solution as opposed to the general solution here. So I hope that's given you some idea then on these types of first order differential equations. They're called exact equations, OK, when they have this particular format. You can't separate the variables in them, so you have to look for the possibility of this style, for this to work. OK, well, that brings us now anyway to the end of this particular video. So I hope it's been of use to you. Don't forget, plenty more videos on my website, examsolutions.net.